before you a di different way than I normally come, but I pray that you are encouraged by the word of God on this morning. Grateful for God's traveling mercies and grace as we have been in and out of town over the past four days, but I'm so grateful that God has kept us and sustained us and brought us to this place to hear what thus said the Lord on this morning. And so as I prepared, it's been a busy week as I prepared and, and I sat before the Lord to prepare the word of God, to prepare the word of God for the people of God on today. I wanted and waited to, for God to give me what he wanted me to have for the people on this morning. And he wanted me to address a need that's in the church today, a need. And he wanted me to emphasize the importance of the mindset of each and every believer that is under the sound of my voice. Philippians 2 and 5 immediately came to my mind when, when he told me to begin to focus on the mind of the people. Philippians 2 and 5, for those that don't know, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It, it seemed like that would be so awesome that that, that works, God. If you, if you want me to deal with the mindset of the people, uh, what other mindset should we be chasing after? What other mindset uh, do we need to focus in on this day um, other than the mind of Christ Jesus? Hallelujah. If you take time to read Philippians 2 and 5, it outlines the mindset of Christ. But if you read further in Philippians 2, it talks about a mindset of humility. Where do you get that from, Pastor? Because if you go into verse 6, it says, Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So that scripture, if you actually take time to dig into Philippians 2, 5 through 10 or 1 through 10, it, it refers to the believer in encouragement encourages each and every believer to remind them to be humble in all of their endeavors and to make sure that humility is the pathway that they take to be humble as a believer understanding that we as believers though we receive grace we're not deserving of grace understanding uh, that favor is not necessarily fair but favor belongs to us, it, us if we uh, belong to Christ and not only that but understanding that it's important for us as believers not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think but to think soberly according to God has dealt to every man the measure of faith Philippians 2 and 5 refers to the believer being humble in all of their endeavors, all of their dealings, all of their um, goals and aspirations to make sure that we keep a mindset of humility. And as I dug in, the Lord told me to keep on digging, son. That's not what I want you to focus in on today because the believers not right now are not necessarily struggling with humility they're struggling with something else. And, and I sat there and I said, oh, God, what do you want me to deal with on today? He told me the people are not dealing with humility issues, but they're dealing with issues that may be causing their faith to waver. They're dealing with things. That, they're dealing with a life, and especially life when life does not seem to be fair. They're struggling to do right when everyone else appears to be doing wrong and getting away with it. We talked about that. The young people talked about that in Sunday school on this morning. We're struggling to stay afloat while, think, while we're waiting for our change to come. It's amazing why we begin to ask why. Why, God, why are we dealing with these feelings? Why are we dealing with this mindset? Why are we dealing with this attack? on our mental uh, infrastructure, on our, on our mentality, on what we hear and what we believe. Why are we being attacked at this point, at this present moment in present time? Why are we dealing with this ailment? 
got this affliction that I've been dealing with for a long time, someone is saying, and God, I've been praying, and the affliction and the ailment seems to still be around. Why, God, am I dealing with this over and over again? Someone else is saying, why is my husband or why is my wife acting this way? Why am I dealing with this, God, when I've given myself all over to you and I've come before your presence with singing, I've yielded myself, but God, the best I seem to be doing, it seems like my best is just not good enough. Why are my children going crazy? I know that's almost every single parent's testimony. It seems like everything that I've taught my children to do, it seems like they want to do something different. And I just don't understand, God, why things are going the way that they are going. Here I am. I'm, I'm in the church. God, here I am. I'm doing all that I can. Here I am, God, striving to be right and striving to be holy. But, God, something's going on. I'm tithing and I'm giving and, and my money is funny and my change is strange. God, that don't make sense sense when you told me uh, that the cattle's upon thousands upon thousands of hill belong to you and that there's no good thing that you with withhold from those that fear you and those that love you James told us this he said count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations but I don't know about you all sometimes enough really should be enough has anybody ever reached that point where enough has to be enough and I, I stand all I can stand and I can't stand no more and I know the word tells me that we should not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not but is there anyone else that can admit you don't have to raise your hand today that you think that you've reached your enough is enough point and that you're looking for God to come through immediately, that you need God to come through with a breakthrough, that you need God to come through with a change that God needs to touch you right where you are at it's in the mind, I need you all to understand today, is that where the enemy attacks us the most. It's in the mind. It's in the mind. The thought comes from the mind. The thoughts that we have, it comes from the mind. It don't come from your heart. It doesn't come from your body. But thoughts come from your mind. Hallelujah. I should slap them upside the head. That's a thought. It didn't come from your heart. It came from your mind. I need to uh, go do this. That didn't come from your mind. I mean, your heart, that came from your mind. So thoughts come from the mind. Not only do thoughts come from the mind, but imagination comes from the mind as well you didn't come with up with that thought or that mentality or that imagination but something placed it inside of your head to say mm, I wonder what should I do here or should I do this or I wonder what it would be like if I did this or I wonder what it would be like if I go here or I wonder what it would be like if I just sipped and tip and midnight whatever it is that you want to do that is an imagination that comes from the mind not only are we dealing with thoughts and not only are we dealing with imaginations where the devil is trying to come in and twist what we're thinking and try to twist what we're imagining, but he's also twisting what we are memory, uh, remembering as well. Hallelujah. Because memory comes from the mind as well. And the devil, he tries to bring back memories uh, that will cause you to be bound. He tries to bring back memories that cause you to be afflicted. He tries to bring back memories that causes you to go back where you were and not take hold to where God has brought you to right now. Hallelujah. You remember when you used to uh, sip and tip and smoke and drink and all those things? Uh, do you remember when uh, you was a fighter and you wouldn't take nothing from nobody? Do you remember uh, when you used to hit the club on Saturday night and you would get up and do all that you could on Sunday because God was not on your mind. He tries to bring back things. Do you remember when everybody used to think you were the baddest thing on the world? Do you remember uh, when you used to sit uh, uh, and do this and go sleep with every single woman, every single man, uh, anytime you had an opportunity? Do you remember those times? The devil tries to come into our minds. And he, and he, he plays uh, mental warfare on us. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you all, but mental warfare is more tiring and more exhausting than, I mean, than physical warfare any day. Because when your mind is worn out, your mind is the place that tells your body to keep going, to keep fighting, to hold on to the hope and hold on to the promises of God. Your mind is what tells you, remember God's word as well. Don't just remember the things, the formal things and the things of old. You've got to remember.
remember uh, the new things that God is doing. It's in your mind that combat the things and the tricks and the snares and the traps that the enemy is trying to set for you in your mind. Spiritual warfare, mental warfare is way more exhausting than physical warfare because it wears out your mind, your body, and your soul. Paul told the church at Ephesus he wanted them to know because many of us like to fight things and fight situations. We're dealing with people saying things. We're dealing with certain circumstances that we're fighting in our lives. We're dealing uh, with those that are doing right. Seems like they're prospering today. We're dealing with all of these things that we're seeing in the flesh. But Paul, Paul told them in Ephesians chapter 6, he said, hey, you all, he says, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Stop trying to fight what you're dealing with today. Stop trying to war against the things that you're dealing with, with your flesh and blood, because you're not going to win the physical fight. Hallelujah. But you've got to understand that you're fighting against uh, flesh, not flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The thief cometh not, John 10 and 10, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And if he can get in your mind, then it makes it easier for him to come in and successfully steal and to kill and to destroy. In Philippians chapter 1, it is the epistle that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, and it is considered to be one of his uh, profound uh, epistles from prison. It's one of his letters from prison where Paul found himself in captivity for doing those things that were right. It was not that Paul was put into captivity because he was doing things that are wrong. Uh, we're dealing with things today not because we're doing right, but it's because we've done some wrong things. We, made, we have not made God our priority, and we, and we end up reaping what we have sown. Many people don't understand the reaping. It comes from whether you do good or you do bad as well. Whatever it is that you endeavor to sow into your life, whatever it is that you make your priority, you're going to get back that and so much more. If you give God sacrifice, then God's going to be willing to sacrifice you for you, and he's going to bless you exceeding abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. But if you're going to deny him, and you're going to go and give him your least and your less, then guess what? God's going to return that back unto you, because what you sow is what you reap. But Paul found himself in prison. Many of us are dealing with things and circumstances and issues in life, not because of things that we have done that have been wrong, but it's because God wants to get the glory out of our lives. I know that's tough to feel here. I know that that's tough to eat and swallow uh, because God, I, you can bless me. You can come up with a different method of blessing me. You can you can come up with a, a better way uh, than, than, than to make me go through hell and high water uh, just to experience your glory. Yes, God, I understand in Romans 8 and 18, it tells me that the suffering of this present time cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed, but God, do I really have to go through suffering? Do I really have to go through praying? I don't know who I'm talking to today. And if I'm not preaching to anybody, I'm preaching to myself. If I don't understand, God, why I have to go through heartache and pain just to experience your glory. But it's amazing that everything that God has said in his word has showed us that there has to be glory after what we go through. If we don't have that hope that there shall be glory after what we go through, then our hope is worthless. Our hope is null and void. If we cannot hold on to God's unchanging word, that God remains to be the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If God was a way maker yesterday and God was a way maker today and God is still going to be a way maker tomorrow, if we cannot hold on to those promises then our faith is null and void you've got to understand people of God that today is not the day to give up today is not the day to throw in the towel today is not today uh, the day to say God I don't know where you're at and so I'm going to do my own thing I'm going to lean into my own understanding I'm going to go the way that seemeth right today is not the day because the dead are just uh, the number of those that are dying today is growing exponentially 
I believe it. I, I'm just feeling it in my soul that there's more people dying than more people being born. Hallelujah. And if people are dying day after day, that means hell is enlarging itself exponentially every single day. Hallelujah. And if you don't hold on, you may find yourself waking up. Hallelujah. Looking in, in, in the wrong environment, looking in the wrong uh, situation. Paul found himself afflicted. Hallelujah. And imprisoned for doing those things that were right. And if you go with me, I'm going to preach straight from Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. I know I did it a little bit differently today, but this is where God took me to go. He told me to go to Philippians chapter 12 and encourage the people that they can hold on, that they have to have a made-up mind, that they've got to make their minds up, that it's for God that they're going to live and for God that they're going to die. Because if God is not their priority, then everything that they're trying to add to themselves to make themselves stable, to make themselves in a situation sure will not be sure if you build your hopes on those things that are temporal but the Bible declares build your hopes on things eternal and hold on to God's unchanging hand Philippians chapter 1 verse 12 declares but I would you should understand I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in the palace and in all places. And many of the brethren, Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. I've been trying to tell you all throughout this year that this is our moment to seize the things that God has set up for us and these things that God has endeavored for us to obtain in this season so that when we walk into our next season, which will be our due season, we'll be equipped with everything that we need and so much more. God told us this year uh, to seize the moment, but if I can just look over some of y'all's lives and begin to think things over, I, I think many of us have missed the point. We've missed the mark because we have not seized the things, the moments and when we need to seize them and chase after the things that God has set before us. Hallelujah. We become lax in our worship. We become lax in our hunger and thirst after righteousness. We become lax in making God our priority. And because we've not made God our priority, God has not made the blessings that he's had stored up for us his priority as well. The Bible tells us to encourage us to give. And it shall be given back unto you good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The giving is that you've got to empty yourself out of what you have because if you have all already filled pockets God don't have room to bless you and some of us been satisfied with what we have not understanding that what we have is not going to last forever but only what we do for Christ is going to last meaning when we make God our priority he promises us that he will supply all of our needs when we make God our priority he tells us that he's going to add all these things unto us when we make God our priority there is absolutely no good thing that he will withhold from us us, but we've gotten into the temporal mindset we've got into what what has he done for me lately mindset we become comfortable being at home we become comfortable being lazy and insecure we become comfortable uh, uh, hearing other people instead of seeking after the word from the Lord Paul had to tell them, hey, you all, the things that I'm going through is not so that God would kill me. He didn't come to kill me because the Bible tells me that he came that I might have life and not just life, but I may live that therefore more abundantly, life therefore more abundantly. He said, but I need you to understand that the things that you're dealing with, that the afflictions that you're dealing with, that the trials that you're dealing with, that the heartaches that you're dealing with, that the hardships that you're dealing with, those things that you're dealing with, with they're not here to kill you I know it seems like the devil is winning I know it seems like the enemy is getting the best of us but he said he going he not gonna win he's not going to win he's just a thief he's just sounds like a roaring lion but he has no power he has no authority you've got to understand that God will come through with his word Paul said he said I want you to understand stop worrying about what you're going through stop worrying and keeping your eyes focused in on 
on the trials and the afflictions, what you need to do is understand the purpose. Hallelujah. Well, what's my purpose? God, I don't understand what my purpose is. He said, I've come that you may share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Matthew 28 and 18, 19 and 20 says, go ye therefore and teach all nations. And when you teach them, I want you to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Acts 1 and 8 says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be a witness not just now not just in your family but that you're going to be a witness in Jerusalem Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world what he's saying is that I want you all to be living epistles that are read of men that means that your struggles and your hardships are not for you Paul said it's not for me. He says in verse 12, he says, the things that I've gone through the, that have befallen me, he says, they are for the furtherance of the gospel. They're for the furtherance. Well, what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. That when I was deep in sin, far from the peaceful shores, kneeling there, deeply stained, sinking to rise the more, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. It's no good that I've done on my own, but Jesus saw me in my state of disrepair, and he picked me up and he turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ but our gospel, our, our stories are different. Some of us, he's saved from alcohol. That's not my story anymore, but I'm thankful to God. Some of us, he, he's saved from drugs, but that's not our story anymore. Some of us saved us from sexual impurity and immorality, but that's not our story anymore. We've got to tell of what God has brought us through because someone else is coming along the way needs to know that God still saves. Paul said, those things which happened to me in verse 12 and befallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel so that my afflictions, my bonds, so that my heartache and my pain, my bonds, so that my good times and bad times, my bonds in Christ are manifest everywhere I go. So when I'm tried at work, it's so that God can get the glory. When I'm tried in the mall or at the gas station, it's so that God can get the glory. When someone flips me the finger as I'm driving along the road, that's so God can get the glory. Yes, and no matter what comes our way, when the enemy comes up against us like a flood it's an opportunity for God to lift up a standard before you to let you know you can hold on you're not the same that you used to be you're no longer who you used to be but I've come to make you new if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away and behold all things are become as new Paul said in verse 14, and many other brethren in the Lord, they're waxing confident because of what I have gone through. The struggles that I'm dealing with, the heartache and the pain that I'm fighting, the issues in my family that we're dealing with, whatever your lot is that you're dealing with today, whatever your it is today, it's not so that it will kill you, it's so that God will get the glory out of your life and that the gospel will be furthered more and more. Paul said in verse number 15 in Philippians 15, verse 115, some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ in con of contention, not sincerely, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds. There are going to be people that are going to look at your story, going to look at your situation, and they're going to tell you they don't take all that. They're going to tell you that I wouldn't be continue to do what I've been doing if it ain't working out. They see what you see that is in temporal. Hallelujah. They see the things that are temporary, and you've got to know, according to our scripture, uh, our theme for the day, it says to everything there is a season and a time to purpose for every purpose under the heaven there's a time for everything and you've got to understand that as believers we're not always going to be on the mountaintop but sometimes we've got to experience some valley lows we've got to experience some dry places it was the three Hebrew boys that had to deal with something that was devastating and detrimental. They decided that they were going to uh, live for God. They weren't going to bow to Nicodemus, I mean to uh, uh, Nicod not Nicodemus, help me, Holy Ghost, Nebuchadnezzar, thank you, Holy Ghost. They were going to, they, they, I'm not going to bow to Nebuchadnezzar and his idols, but instead we're going to hold on to the promises of God. And they found themselves, even though they were doing right, 
He found himself cast into a fiery furnace that not only should have destroyed them as they were thrown in, but it actually killed those that threw them into the fire. Hallelujah. But it was in the midst of the fire. It was in the midst of the fiery furnace. They didn't get their breakthrough. They told Nebuchadnezzar, uh, we're not going to bow to you. Uh, but if you throw me into the fire, we know that our God can save us. But if he don't, that does not mean he can't do it. It just means that it was not his will for us to survive the fire. Sometimes we're going to go through some situations and God is going to deliver us. But we're going to have to learn that sometimes we're going to have to go through the fire. But you got to know that when you go through the fire, the fire won't burn you nor will the flames kindle against you you won't be able to see anything that, that the fire tried to do to you because God will keep you in the midst of the fire but you got to hold on because God is a promise you got to hold on you can't throw in the towel and some people are going to talk about you because I'm sure many people talked about the three Hebrew boys why don't you all just bow to him why don't you all just continue to do what you used to do why don't you go back to your comfort zone of, of living in the flesh instead of living in the spirit of God and that's what the enemy tries to do he tries to come into the mind to deceive you and tell you God didn't hear you or God can't see you or God don't know what you're doing but you got to know he knows your ending from your beginning God says I have plans for you Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end you've got to understand that you've got to continue to hold on to what God's word says and not to what other people are saying some indeed preach Christ verse 15 even of envy and strife some of goodwill the verse 16, the one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add afflictions to my bonds. Stop listening to what everybody else got to say. Because they're they not, they not trying to lead you. If they're not leading you to the rock, if they're not, David said, where do I turn to when my soul is overwhelmed? He said, he said it out loud, lead me to the rock. If I've lost my way, lead me to Jesus. If I if I detoured or, or deviated to the left or to the right, get me back to the rock. Get me back to God. If they're not leading you to the rock, then those are people that you don't need to be listening to. Because when your soul is overwhelmed, there's only one place that can heal my broken soul. There's only one place that can turn my life around. There's only one person that can pick me up and put me back to the place of favor and to the place of abundance that I belong in. Only one person can turn my situation around. It's not President Trump. No, uh, and I'm not. He can't do it. And not Biden. No, he can't do it. It's not whoever your political fan is. No, he or she cannot do. It. Man cannot bring you out of what you need to be brought out from. They're only temporary solutions. But I don't know about you. I need an eternal solution. I need something that's going to help me to last. Verse 17, it says, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding either way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And therein I do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. In this power of the scripture, he wants us to be reminded that, yes, you may be dealing with people that are there to try to kill you and to destroy you. But there's also people that are there that are trying to build you up. God won't put no more on you can bear than you can bear. If you dare to come into the presence of God and dare and stop forsaking the assembly of yourselves together as believers should do, then what you do is you're going to have people that are going to be there to encourage you. Last week was a service like none other. It was a service like none other because God showed himself strong and proved himself mighty uh, in the midst of us as we pray for God for a miracle. On that Friday before last Sunday we've got a call that sister Robs could not see and hallelujah and lady yo told her sister Robs you need to get on to the stream she she don't really she, she don't always get on the stream but she told her you need to get on to the stream because the pastor and the people of God are praying for you and when I saw her pop up on the screen the spirit of God took over the service even more and we began to pray more fervently and effectively because we saw the need and we saw that she was standing in the need of prayer and we said we're going to go to war because we want our dear sister to be healed 
We prayed on Friday. We prayed on Saturday. We even prayed on Sunday. And after I ministered, Lady Yo sent me a text message saying that Sister Rob said that she, she couldn't see on Friday, but she can see colors now. I don't know about you, but that's a miracle. How can somebody not see on Friday, but they can see people and see colors now on Sunday? But then it, it, it didn't just leave there. That called us to that caused us to become and light a fire in the sanctuary. But it went a little further because a couple of moments after she sent that text, some of us left. But she called on FaceTime, and not only could we see that she can see, but she saw us as well and can see all the people that showed uh, that we showed her on the phone. So that lit some of us up even more because God is true to his word. We need each other. We cannot make it on our own. If you allow yourself to be separated from the people of God, then you're going to find, you find yourself neglected. You're going to find yourself insecure. You're going to find yourself in danger because the thief cometh to steal and to kill and to destroy. And if you're not getting any word, if you're not shaking a brother's hand, if you're not loving and hugging on one another, then what you're missing is you're missing the encouragement that comes with the body of believers. You're missing those that will let you know that I'm praying for you. It's enough. You can imagine all that you want to imagine, but I don't know about you. Hearing is better than just imagining. When I hear that someone says that they love me, when I hear an amen in the sanctuary, when I hear that that's a word, Pastor, and thank you for the word, when I hear those types of things, then I don't have to lean into my own understanding or imagine. Because I told you, in the mind is imagination. The devil comes in, he's just not attacking you, but he's attacking your leader as well. The devil comes and try to discourage, Pastor, the church is empty. What's going on? You're doing all of this labor, and, and, and ain't nobody listening, ain't nobody coming, but the devil is a liar. Every single day that I go forth and stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ, God is being glorified. Hallelujah. Man tells you to look at numbers, but God looks at the heart. Hallelujah. And God knows what we're doing, and only way we get that encouragement is that we get that encouragement from one another to remind each other that I love you that I can't make it without you that I'm going forward going to a greater place and I want you to go along with me Paul says hey there's going to be some people that love you and know that your work and your labor is not in vain verse number 19 says for I know that this shall turn unto my salvation through your prayer and through the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. What he was trying to let us know here today is that as he wrote in Romans chapter 8 and 28, he says, and we know that all things work together for good. He said, because if you love God then and you've been called according to his purpose, then everything that you've got coming your way is going to turn to your salvation. He says, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed about that in all boldness as always. So now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be life or it be in death. Then he said in verse number 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. In case you didn't get it in the message topic today and I didn't hand it out earlier, but my message topic is today is that I've got my mind made up. Why do you need to have your mind made up? Because trouble is going to come before us on every hand. But if you allow trouble to dictate your praise and you allow trouble to dictate your eyesight and your focus, then what you're going to do is you're going to find yourself in hopelessness and in despair. But what you've got to understand when you make up in your mind that you've got to live for Christ and when I make up my mind that I'm going to live for Christ then I'm going to stand on the promises of God and I'm going to receive the blessing of the Lord for me that's why Job said in Job 14 and 14 he said if a man dies he questions shall he live again and whether I live or die his statement was all of the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come what Job understood is that change may not come immediately but if you hold on to God's unchanging hand he guaranteed that this too shall pass 
Isaiah 40, 31 says, for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It says not only will they, his, their strength be renewed, but he says they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Hallelujah. He said they shall run and not be weary. He said they shall walk and faint not. What he tried to let us know is that change is going to come and will you want to make sure when your change come, the change is the change that God has ordained for your life. I don't want my change to lead me to destruction, but I want my change to lead me to God. Hallelujah. So when my soul is overwhelmed, I want God, someone to let me know that God still is faithful. When my soul is overwhelmed, I want somebody to remind me that God is still sitting high and that he's still looking low. When my soul is overwhelmed, I need to make up in my mind that God is going to get the glory out of my life. Hallelujah. Philippians 4 and 8 says this. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true and whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just and whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. When things begin uh, to come your way, you've got to learn that I made up my mind that God is going to get, their gl get the glory. You've got to hide yourself in the word of God. Stop allowing fear to get the best of you. Stop allowing doubt to get the best of you. Stop allowing confusion to get the best of you. What you've got to do is you've got to think on those things that are true. Think on those things that are honest. Think on those things that are just and pure. Think on those things that are lovely and those things that are of a good report. Think on these things because they'll lead you back to Christ. They'll lead you back to the rock. They'll lead you back to your point of hope instead of into a place of despair and chaos. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Make up your mind that God, you're going to live, and for God, you're going to die. Resting on your feet this morning, I've got a made-up mind, a made-up mind. Let every head bowed and every eye closed. Paul found himself in captivity. He found himself in bondage. And some of the situations that we're dealing with today makes it feel like we're in captivity. Makes it feel like that we're in bondage. But even in the midst of captivity and bondage, Paul still had hope that the things that he was dealing with were only going to be temporary. So he said, I won't complain. I won't complain. I'll make God my priority. I won't complain. I'll give God glory and honor and praise. I won't complain because my good days will always outweigh my bad days. I won't complain. A made up mind. Is your mind made up? Is your mind made up? education people said a mind is a terrible thing to waste but if your mind is not stayed on him you're wasting your time and your mind think on these things think on the ways that he's made think on the doors that he's opened think on these things now father in heaven I thank you for this time to share with your people I thank you for the encouraging power of your word. Your word is what we need to stand today. Let us hide ourselves in your word. Not hide ourselves in our sorrows. Not hide ourselves in our confusions. Not hide ourselves in our fears. But let us think on you and hide ourselves in you. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. God, we're strong because of you. We can do all things because of you. The weapons that are formed against us won't prosper because of you. Because of you, we're the heads and not the tails. Because of you, we're the lenders and not the borrowers. Because of you, we're above and not beneath. Because of you, we're new. All things are passed away and behold, all things are become as new. Help us, God, today. To make up in our mind that you are the way that we need to go. 
We can hold on to you. You don't change. You're consistent, we talked about. You're faithful. You bring stability. Help us to hide ourselves in you. Even when things don't seem like they're going in our favor. Strengthen our Christian walk. Build up our most holy faith. God, get the glory. Get the honor out of my suffering, out of my affliction. For I declare, as your word declares, for the suffering of this present time cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. That's what will lead us. That's what will guide us. That's what will take us through. Your word. Help us to lean back on to your word. Help us to reaffirm ourselves. Rehydrate ourselves. Reactivate ourselves from the promises of your word. Thank you for your promise. Thank you for staying true to your word. Thank you for reminding us that we can make it. So when we make up on our mind, we shall live and not die. I pray healing. I pray miracle signs and wonders. I pray for everyone that's under the sound of my voice. Be glorified, be magnified, and be adored. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. We pray, we say thank God, amen. And amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in to our worship service here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. We pray that something was said or done that encouraged you, that empowered you, that strengthened you on this day. Now it is time for us to give you an opportunity to sow into the life of ministry here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. And there are multiple ways that you can give. First, you can give via Cash App by giving to Dollar Praise Center VA. You also can visit our website, praisecenterkojic.org. Click on the giving link, and it will allow you to give via our website. You also can go to PayPal for those that like to use PayPal and send your donation to info at praisecenterkojic.org. And then last but not least, you can give via Givelify by searching for Praise Center Church of God in Christ in Dumfries, Virginia. Make sure you see my face or Lady Yo's face on the image and you will be giving or donating to the right location. We pray again that you are blessed by our service and we want to let you know by you seeding into the life of Praise Center Church of God in Christ, we're going to declare blessings be upon you. God says, when we give, it shall be given unto us good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running over. We speak blessings to be in your life as you have sown into good soil here at Praise Center Church. May God bless you and may heaven shine upon you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.